everyone, welcome back to the Were Witch Project. I'm Were Witch, and this is Harry. Hello to all you horseless humans, and good evening to my fellow creatures of the night. Well said, Harry. In today's video, we are covering horses. We're going to go over some good early game areas to easily obtain them, some late game info on vampiric steeds, and if you stick around, we'll have some info on how to get a little extra speed for your steed. If you're looking for something specific within our video, or you just like to skip around, check out our timestamps below. And, and uh, we'll also explain just how delicious horses are, uh, grilled and smothered in hot mustard. No, we will not be explaining that today. But, but you said we were covering horses. And, and I like to cover my horse in a nice tangy BBQ. That's disgusting. Let's get to the video. So the first thing you want to do is obtain a horse, right? Early game, there's a couple good spots where you can go to get these. They are in the southwest and southeast corner of Dunley Farmlands. So this one over here is interesting because it shows a horse icon, but we just recently went over there today, less than 30 minutes ago, and could not find any horses over there. So I don't know how much I would trust that one, but you would still be able, if you're coming up here, just bob and weave your way through these guys and you can make your way to the horse track. It's a little bit further, but you're going to have better picking over there anyway. We went ahead and jumped on all the horses so that it would ping on the map uh, how many spawns there were there. I think there's three there, two or three right there, three right here, and then if you venture up a little bit further to the cotton farm here, as you can see, there is uh, in the important resources, you can see that horseshoe icon, uh, and there are two right there as well. Um, in contrast, here's the interesting thing. There is no horseshoe icon over here, but <laughs> this is where, in fact, we've got this in one of our full length episodes. This is where I normally go to get uh, starting horses at, and there is no horseshoe icon in the important resources when you hover this area. But uh, I normally go to this one. You can go to either side, depending on where you spawn at, you know, which one is the closest one. But I think these are probably the best areas if you are looking to get a horse early on. So what's the difference from one horse to the next? Uh, I think they all taste alike. Uh, I do prefer uh, a delicious Mustang though. I mean, uh, oh, where do you think the saying came from? What saying? That I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. <laughs> we are not eating them, Harry. Maybe you aren't eating them. Horses in V Rising spawn with varying stats. Players often attempt to find horses with the best possible stats, or highest stats, as they affect how well your horse will perform. <laughs> to view a horse's stats, you'll first need to mount it. Afterwards, you'll be able to view its stats while in vicinity of them with your inventory open. Let's go ahead and look at that now. Horses in V Rising have three different stats that they can spawn with. Today, we have helping us Lugosi, Lee, and Oldman. They're gonna show us how these stats can differ between horses and what you should be looking for if you are attempting to find the highest numbers within the three previously mentioned categories. Those three categories are max speed, acceleration, and rotation speed. Horses can spawn with any mixed variety within the windows we're going to cover now. To start off, let's look at max speed. It has a minimum value of 8 and a cap of 11. This stat affects what a horse tops out at while it is moving. Lugosi here has 10.1, Lee spawned with 10.6, and Oldman 10.6 as well. Acceleration has a minimum value of 3 and maxes out at 7. Acceleration is how quickly your horse can reach their top speed. 
Oldman here has 5.8, 6.1 on Lee, and 6.2 on Lugosi. And finally, we have rotation speed with a minimum value of 12 and topping out at 14. Rotation speed relates to how fast the horse can turn. So as you can see here, Lugosi's got 13.1, 12.7, and finally 12.1 here. So you're gonna see horses, they can spawn anywhere within these ranges. These guys over here aren't too bad, but some of the stats could be better. Let's go ahead and look at the horse that we have here in the studio to compare and contrast these numbers a little bit further. <coughs> Harold, where did our horse go? I was gone for maybe a minute. Uh, what horse? <sighs> so as you can see, your newly acquired horses are not invincible. They can die whether it be from friend or foe. Let's go over how to care for your horse and check out their abilities that might save you and them during your travels around Vardaron. Horses in V Rising need to be fed with plant fiber to increase how long they're going to stick around with you. This method was introduced with 1.0 from the previous method of water skins, which were used in early access. As you can see here, we have 15 hours, 52 minutes, 16 seconds. We take this fat stack of plant fiber, drag and drop it into these three slots here. Uh, this horse's time has been increased to four days, 19 hours, 52 minutes. Um, so just make sure that you're feeding these guys, especially on the horses that you are wanting to keep around. While you are on your horse, you have several abilities that you can use. You have your primary attack, dismount, and gallop. Uh, your primary attack works just as you think it would. We'll show it on these wolves over here. As you can see, it's a pretty good thing to have. It helps a little bit. Um, I don't do a lot of horseback fighting. I, I, I wouldn't advise it, but uh, maybe you are better than me. Most likely you are better than me. Uh, we also have our gallop here. It increases the movement speed while mounted. Slowing down will cancel the effect. We're going to go ahead and pop that so you can see it quickly moving. Now, this horse is not the best, but it's not the worst either. It's got a max speed of 10.9, 6.8 on the acceleration, 12.7 on its rotation speed, right? There's its rotation there. Um, you want to make sure. <laughs> let's see what we can Good get to have happen here with Vincent. Uh, I want to show you guys that these horses are not yeah. invincible. Let's try to. There you go. As you can see, your horse can get hurt while you're out doing this. So you want to be careful uh, and avoid this. Most of the time, horses are going to run away when they get struck but you could see he didn't actually run that far uh <laughs> when he got hit by that crossbow there oh vincent go away so be mindful of that while you're on these guys and you're first starting out just be careful um as you are on the horse more often you're going to learn timing when to use gallop and your other abilities to avoid nasty situations. Once you upgrade your castle to level four, you will unlock the ability Dominate Mount. Using this ability will convert a horse to a vampiric steed and grant it some pretty useful abilities. You'll now be able to summon your new vampire mount to your side and even revive them from death by using the Recall and Revive ability. Let's go in game and see that now. While in dominate mount form, you will gain the ability to recall and revive companion. Recall your companion, teleporting it to your location. This action also revives and heals your companion if it has perished. Let's go ahead and show that now. Shadow calls for my mount. All right, there we go. And then you also will unlock release companion. Press and hold to release your companion, permanently vanquishing it from existence. This action cannot be undone. We're going to go ahead and do that now. There we go. 
And then uh, if you're just starting off and you've just unlocked Dominate Mount, you're also going to have Subdue Mount. This is where you're going to start off at. This is a channeling spell used to turn a horse into a eternal companion. A companion can be recalled to your location and can be resurrected. You may only have one active companion at a time. So this is our guy that we're going to choose to do. He's a pretty good horse, 10.9, 6.8, 13.3. Not perfect, but good enough. We're gonna start channeling the spell. You can see the timer bar is ticking down. And we now have a vampiric mount. Once you've used subdue mount on your horse, you're going to notice some new abilities or icons. Uh, you'll have dismount. Of course, you'll have your primary attack uh, gallop, which stays the same. Increase the movement speed while mounted. Slowing down will cancel the effect. And finally, shadow leap. Turn into a shadow leap and gain a burst of speed can be used to leap through most types of solid objects. This can also be used to dodge projectiles. And jump over things. Let's um, run over here real fast and we'll show just how crazy this thing can work. There you go. It's pretty awesome what it can bound over. Uh, it's a very useful ability. So, when would a vampiric equine enthusiast, uh, when would they decide to dominate a horse? Well, I would think any horse would suffice as long as it's pretty close to the previously mentioned 11714 max stats. It's really up to the player, but mainly depends on the horse. <laughs> uh, depends on a horse. Uh, I've never seen a horse in diapers before. Uh, yuck. When I chomp into a delicious horse ass, I'd prefer it sans diaper. Carrying on and ignoring Harry's nauseating comments there, let's say you do come across that perfect 11714 horse after you've already dominated a mount, or you decide you want to get rid of your dominated mount for some other reason. You would want to use the release companion ability while in dominate mount form in those situations. We advise that you do this in a safe place like your castle, and once you have your new horse nearby and ready to undergo that process. Once you've settled on your vampiric steed, it's time to get it saddled. You'll do this at the leather working station. As of the time of this video, there are three different saddles to make for your vampiric steed in the game. There is the vampire horse saddle, available to all players who own the base game, the Plague Chemist Saddle, which was released in the Sinister Evolution DLC. And finally, Rodane's Steed Saddle, which comes in the Legacy of Castlevania Premium Pack. If you'd like to see us showcase the contents of those DLCs in-game, you can check that out here. Or you can always look in our V-Rising playlist at the end of this video. Now, all Vampire Horse Saddles give plus one to your max speed and acceleration. This is a nice way of making your mount a little faster along with their newly gained immortal gift. You can freely change out your mount saddle to switch appearances as well. Oh, and those are purely cosmetic. Other than the neat visual effects, they provide no benefits other than what I just mentioned. There is no pay to win here. Good job, Stunlock. Plus one to speed and acceleration, huh? Those dominated horses don't look so fast. I bet I could catch one of those. Mmm, sprinkle a nice salt rub, chew on a piece of dangly gristle, uh, dab it into a little cup of ranch on the side. All this eating horse talk has got me feeling... What did I say? <laughs> Whatever. So... If you're looking for a little more horsepower because I'm chasing, I mean, uh, because something is chasing after you and your horse, uh, you might want to get your hands on the Wrangler's Potion. 
it's unlocked through the study, which you get the ability to build after taking out Maja the Dark Servant at gear level 47. Uh, I don't think the witch has made a V-Blood a boss guide for her, so uh, let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments below. Uh, I'll tell witch to get right on it. Uh, now, once you've unlocked the Wrangler's potion recipe within the study, uh, bada boom, it can be crafted at your alchemy table. If you wanna possibly bypass that process altogether, you can check the merchants and vendors to purchase the Wrangler's potion and, and maybe the recipe too. Uh, remember that inventory rotates and refreshes on those guys, uh, so it may not always be there. Uh, if you decide to go that route, check out the silver icons on the map. You'll find the vendors and the merchants there. And, and also, make sure that you guys are using your disguises when approaching them. Not all vendors feel safe when a vampire rolls up on them with a big bag of silver, literally burning a hole in their pocket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, quick. Witch is still in the restroom, bladder like a newborn. Uh, so, so listen. Anybody got any extra horses hanging around their castle that uh, maybe they don't care about anymore? M maybe one with a low max speed? Oh, sh What were you guys talking about? Uh, n nothing. Uh, the viewers and I were just, uh, horsing around. All right, everyone. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the guide or had fun watching, Maybe slap that like button, share the video with a friend, subscribe, or leave us any questions or comments below. We enjoy getting a chance to talk with you. Those things help us out more than we could ever thank you for. It helps the channel grow, and it really brightens this one's mood when he reads the messages. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, definitely leave me a comment below. <laughs> Horse locations. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> thanks for watching. <sighs> See you later. You're cleaning that up. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see anything. What? I'm, I'm starving over here.